So this episode of Pokemon is about a guy who owns a scissor but does not want to use it to battle because he'd rather sit at his computer. Which roughly translates to this episode is about a guy who is an absolute bloody twat. <laughs> We begin today's episode with Team Rocket being challenged to a battle against the trainer's Scizor and getting absolutely ruined when James suddenly asks, Sir, maybe you'd care for a rematch? A rematch? He just wiped out Meowth, Arbok and Weezing all on his own. Do you really think Lickitung and Victory Bell are going to fare much better? Surely you're not even thinking of sending your fainted Pokemon back out again. Team Rocket, use your noodles. Direct quote from Brock when Ash and friends come across this Scizor. If you ask me, I'd say it doesn't have a trainer. Mate, it's only been here for a about 20 seconds. I'm surprised you've not got whiplash from jumping to that conclusion so quickly. When Misty yells at the Scizor's trainer for scaring them, he apologizes and says they were just doing some secret training. Mate, you are literally running around the woods and jumping out at every group of people you see. That doesn't really seem like secret training to me. It's more like just being a fucking nuisance. So this man is the Pokemon trainer Mora Masa and his Scizor that he calls Masamune. Mate, I'll be completely honest, I am not the sharpest spoon in the cupboard, so I'm probably gonna mess this guy's name up at some point because it's not a name I've ever heard before today. Now Masamune I'm fine with because that's Auron's celestial weapon in Final Fantasy X. Oh and that's just the first thing that comes to my head when I hear that name by the way. I know the name does originally come from a medieval Japanese blacksmith just before anyone gets tilted at me. Direct quote from the Pokedex. Scizor, the Scizor Pokemon. Wait, what? Do you not mean Scizor the Scissor Pokemon? Yikes, lads, could you not have spared time for just one more take? This whole thing gets even more confusing when you realize that Scizor was only the Scissors Pokemon in Generation 2 and is now known as the Pinsir Pokemon. Direct quote from Ash. It kind of looks like a bigger, redder Scyther. Well, yeah. The Pokedex literally just told you it's the evolved form of Scyther. Pay attention, lad. Brock then follows up with, Yeah, but Scizor is a lot more powerful than Scyther. And how would you know, mate? This is your first first time seeing one. And to be fair to Scyther, Scizor isn't that much more powerful. 20 base attack and 20 base defense isn't exactly a huge difference. Marum... <sighs> Wait, hang on. Marum... <sighs> I told you I'd forget. Maramasa says he's impressed by Ash and by his Pikachu. Wait, why? They haven't even done anything. Like, literally nothing. They just stared at Scizor and then checked the Pokedex. How's that impressive? Maramasa brings Ash and friends to his elite Pokemon training center. And surprise, surprise, it's a full-on Kanto fest. Like, other than his Scizor, and another Scizor we'll see in a little bit, and Ash's Heracross, there are no other Johto Pokemon featured in this episode. Are we sure this series isn't actually called Kanto Journeys? Could they at least not have had another trainer's Heracross or a Hitmontop or a... Um, or... Wait, a Heracross, Tyrogue, and Hitmontop really the only fighting types added in Generation 2? And for some reason, they added 15 normal types? Oh, wait a minute. It's my boy! I take it all back. This place is great. Absolute banger of a dojo here, Muramasa. Couldn't rate it any higher. Apparently, Masamune the Sizzle used to move so fast, people would call it the Crimson Streak. Mate, Sizzle's not even that fast. Especially not compared to Scyther. What does this guy even achieve by exaggerating Sizzle's speed? Now, if you'd like to help me exaggerate the success of this YouTube channel, hit the like button, share the video on social media, and leave a lovely comment down below. And if you can't think of a lovely comment, leave something generic, like Sizzle, more like piss boring. Or just comment the name of the secret Pokemon I've hidden somewhere in the video. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and set notifications to always on so you never miss an episode of Pokemon WTF Moments or Siri Battles or anything on my channel. Thank you as always for getting us to 1.76 million subscribers. I know it doesn't look like that right now, but if you subscribe today, maybe YouTube will add that extra zero. Oh, and become a member as well because it helps support the channel and you also get to use the cool emojis and you get the little badge next to your name and stuff and that's pretty rad isn't it and i think if we get like three more members we get to add another emoji i don't know the tiers the amounts of emojis we can get but you know the more members the more emojis and the more support for the channel and that's like i said bloody rad Thanks. So one of the students, called Shingo, has a laptop with access to a database of statistics about noteworthy trainers going back five years. Okay, but shouldn't stuff like this be available to all trainers? Like, why the hell does this Shingo kid from the middle of buttfuck nowhere in Johto get access to such an important resource but nobody else does? And where's all this information coming from, anyway? The only place that should have info on Asher's current team is Professor Oak's lab or the most recent Pokemon Center they visited. So why is Professor Oak or 
your nurse Joy feeding Shingo this information, but not keeping Ash up to date on other trainers. Not really a WTF moment, but God. Seeing Team Rocket get all hyped up about using the internet makes me feel so incredibly old. I remember a time when we didn't even have access to the internet at home, or even a computer for that matter. Like, they try to make the internet sound so cool here, and nowadays we just take it for granted, don't we? Shingo says that Ash is a Type C trainer who uses fairly standard attacks and relies on his Pokemon's power to win for him. That's the part I have a problem with, the way he emphasizes the word for. Like, of course Ash relies on his Pokemon to win for him, he's a Pokemon trainer. After all, he can't battle in his Pokemon's place. That's what rely on your Pokemon's power to win for you sounds like, when it should probably be more rely on your Pokemon's power to win for you. That to me makes more sense. I guess the directors must have missed that. Shingo doesn't want to battle Ash because his data says that Ash will lose. Oh mate, don't be like this. We struggle to get battles on this show enough as it is. Work with us, mate. For some reason, while Ash and friends are talking to Maramasa about Shingo, Masamune is just randomly chopping these things down. I guess it's just bored, maybe? Mate, all the way through this scene where Ash is on his soapbox talking about how important battling is, and in the next scene, there's this weird annoying clicking noise repeating in the background. It kind of sounds like the noise the Wheel of Fortune makes as it clicks its way around. Whatever it is, it's piss irritating. After Meowth hooks up a really long USB cable to Shingo's laptop to start downloading all of his data on different trainers, Jesse starts reeling in the cable to drag the laptop to them. Oh, come on, lads. Why didn't James or Meowth just take the time to explain to Jessie what downloading means. She even asked you in the previous scene and you just ignored her. Kind of seems like something you really should have run by her. Now your cover's gonna be blown just because you didn't clue up your comrade. Um, why does this Cyndaquil only have three legs? Brock asks Team Rocket what they're after this time, and in a moment of uncharacteristic honesty, James says, Only his data? Huh. Straight up telling the truth about your intentions when you could have just lied. That's not very antagonistic. Alright, first up, Jessie decides to initiate a battle and calls for Arbok and Weezing as she throws a Pokeball. Jessie, mate, Weezing is James's Pokemon. Let James handle James's Pokemon. Secondly, Jessie and James each throw only one Pokeball. Yet for some reason, all four of Team Rocket's Pokemon come out. And Nobody even told Lickitung or Victory Bell to come out. So who threw the other balls? Was it Meow? Direct quote from Meow. Next time Team Rocket comes up with a motto, I'm demanding script approval. Mate, that's my attitude to the entire anime. I'm just saying, this show would be a whole lot better if they just let me take a quick look at the script before they decide on the final draft. Also, if Meowth demands script approval for Team Rocket's mottos from this point on, does that mean he approved the nobly heroic man of our times? Because if so, I actually hate him for it. After Shingo mentions that his database has no information on Jesse or James, Brock asks if his name's in there, and Shingo replies, I double checked and there's no mention of any of you anywhere. Hold up a second, mate. Your database has Ash Ketchum in it, whose only accomplishment is reaching the top 16 of the Indigo League. Whee! Actually, Liam, I think you're forgetting that Ash also won the Orange League. Mate, we all know the Orange League doesn't count. It never happened. But you're trying to tell me this database doesn't have information on Brock and Misty, who are both certified Kanto gym leaders? Shingo's database is garbage. Pass it on. Now what's never garbage is using code ACE to save money on G Fuel! That's right, it's G Fuel, the energy formula with barely any calories, zero sugar, and a whole heap of wonderful flavors like the one wonderful sage mode that I'm drinking today. It's Naruto inspired. It's pomelo, orange, and white peach, and it is absolutely, oh, tickety-boo. Oh, that's absolutely banging. And the best part is you can use code ACE to get yourself 10% off your G Fuel order and it helps support the channel while you do. Thank you very much to everybody that uses code ACE. Remember though, G Fuel is for over 18s only because it contains caffeine and children don't need to be anywhere near caffeine. They're annoying enough as it is. And because it contains caffeine, drink it responsibly. Don't be a dickhead, dickhead. So it turns out Shingo also has a sizzle called Blade. Bloody Blade. Is that really the best nickname you could come up with? Like, could you really not think of anything more imaginative than Blade. That's like having a Blastoise and naming it Shelly. It's just really uncool. Blade defeats Arbok, Weezing, Victory Bell, Lickitung, and Meowth with a single quick attack. So real quick, let me do the math for you. That's five targets KO'd by a move that only hits single targets and doesn't even have very high base power, even if it had a technician boost. What I'm saying is, Shingo's a hacker. 
confirmed. After Team Rocket are sent blasting off, Shingo finally agrees to battle Ash, and Marumasa announces that both trainers will only use one Pokemon each. Mate, what an absolute cop-out. We finally get a proper battle and it's a lame 1v1. That's proper disappointing, that. And let's face it, we all know how they decided this. Shingo's one of them shitty trainers who literally only has the one Pokemon. Marumasa can't be that good of a teacher if he hasn't even taught Shingo to go out and catch more Pokemon. Like, isn't that the most basic part of Pokemon training? After Ash sends out Heracross, Brock says the following. Scizor's strengths are its speed and attack power, so Ash is using Heracross because it's fast and puts up a great defense. To be fair, Brock, you were half right there. Heracross is actually a little bit faster than Scizor, but what's all this about it putting up a great defense? Technically, it's less bulky than Scizor. Plus, it's got a four times weakness to flying type moves, and Scizor can learn some flying type moves. Granted, this Scizor doesn't know any flying type moves, but still. Once again, Brock has tried to sound like an expert in something he knows very little about, and just ended up looking like a numpty. When using Quick Attack, Blade simply increases its attack speed halfway through, and according to Brock, this means there's no time for Heracross's Leer to work. Yeah, that's not how Leer works, mate. Even if Heracross is hit first, Leer should still land and lower Blade's defense. Come on, Brock, these are the basics, mate. Apparently, at this speed, Blade's attacks do three times more damage than normal. Yeah, again, that's not how this move works, mate. I don't even think there's an ability that does that. And to be fair, an ability that raises your attack every time your speed goes up would be broken as hell. After Blade lifts up Heracross, Shingo tells Blade to toss it. That's not a Ash tells Heracross to use Horn Attack, a normal type move, on a Steel type Pokemon. Mate, that's not even a same type attack bonus move either. Come on. Direct quote from Ash. You don't learn guts online. No, but you do see a lot of guts online. Man, I wish I hadn't seen half the things I saw online in the early 2000s. I'd have been, what, 13, 14? And so much of that stuff is just burned into my memory forever. Shingo tells Blade to use agility, and when Ash sees this, he says, This scissor is even faster than I thought. Yes, Ash. That's how agility works. The Pokemon increases its speed by two stages. So of course it's faster than you thought it was, because now it is faster. Ash tells Heracross to relax and let Blade come to him. And so Heracross channels his inner Qui-Gon Jinn. Misty says that Prima from the Elite Four told them you have to rely on the strength from inside. Wait, Prima from where? The Elite Four? She never told you she was from the Elite Four. Like we all know she was, but in the episode where she appeared, it wasn't ever mentioned. Heracross actually actually knocks Blade to the ground with a Fury Attack. Bloody Fury Attack. Of all the moves that shouldn't even tickle a Scizor, a Fury Attack did this. Tell you what, Ash's Heracross must be really bloody hench. Ash tells Heracross to use Tackle Attack. Hang on, wait a minute. Let's go through the moves Ash's Heracross has used so far in this episode. Leer, Horn Attack, Takedown, Fury Attack, and tackle? That's five moves. Ash's Heracross apparently knows five moves at the same time. I guess Ash is a hacker. Confirmed. Direct quote from Shingo. Finish it off with False Swipe. Mate, that's not how False Swipe works. It always leaves the opponent with at least one hit point. No matter how many times you use it, it'll never finish an opponent off. Ash tells Shingo to remember that with Pokemon, you can't predict anything. Well, that's not true, because prediction is like half the challenge of Pokemon battling. After Blade is defeated, Shingo runs over to check on it, and Maramasa says, what about your computer? And Shingo says he doesn't need it anymore. Mate, you have an entire database of notable trainers and their Pokemon. That could still be very useful to you, even if you are going to start battling more. I don't get why you seem to think the two are mutually exclusive. Shingo gets excited at the prospect of battling Ash again once he's done more training without his computer. Oh, Shingo. Poor delusional Shingo. This is Ash Ketchum we're talking about. You're never going to see this guy ever again. So, according to the narrator, facts and figures never give us the real story. Only experience can do that. Wow, I didn't realize Pokemon's narrator was actually a Facebook mum researching the pandemic. <laughs> well, I guess if we've learned nothing else this episode, at least we can be certain that the narrator definitely has the words live, laugh, love printed somewhere in his home.